here, Mr. Uh, Starhemberg, distinguished Mr. Nim, dear ladies and gentlemen. Thanks a lot for the invitation to this conference, meeting with a member of a group composed mostly of philosophers give me, gives me the opportunity to return to the field I have been passionate with for many years and which I have now suspended for a while, I suppose. Nevertheless, I hope that the philosophical elements or philosophical inspiration of my arg arguments will be visible. At the same time, however, I would like my remarks to be in the first place remarks made by a diplomat who wants to improve the image of his country in a country of residence. I will also try to make it uh, the remarks connected with practice that I have now as an ambassador and that I had once, some 15 years ago, as a cultural attaché dealing uh, directly with uh, cultural diplomacy. I would like to begin with distinguishing of the two notions of culture, a narrower and a broader one. In a narrower sense, culture is mostly a high culture, that is the art or the arts. By adopting this notion of culture as a leading one, the culture of diplomacy is a presentation of the art of our own country in the country in which we hold our diplomatic mission. This task can take, I would say, two extreme characters, extreme in the sense of Max Weber's ideal types, the first is showing such art that is almost unknown to broader audi audience in the host country, for instance, African or Eskimo arts uh, in Europe. The accent then falls to originality for insight into a dif very different artistic culture, the artistic culture which grows from different traditions, or to show it would be an addition to this point, uh, or to show the most outstanding achievements of contemporary art, original through their novelty. The second form of such art presentation is the emphasis on artists and works that come into a dialogue with the artists and works of the host country. This is an attempt to show that also we, let's say Poles in this respect, that we have a lot to say in a certain field, that we have our own unexpected, here unexpected achievements. It also brings together artists from both the guest country and the host country to look at their creations, to compare them and start collaborating in, on common projects. Especially the European Union favors uh, such an approach, generously sponsor, sponsoring multinationals project. But there are also other funds to mention the Visegrad Fund or the Polish-German French uh, Fund within the Weimar uh, Triangle. I will not hide that this is the most common form of cultural promotion, especially with regard to the activities of cultural insti institutes of European countries and of cultural departments of embassies of countries that don't have their own cultural institutes. It is, and it is not by chance that two types of arts dominate in this, in this approach. The plastic arts, painting, sculpture, design, installations, and so on, and musical arts, concerts, jam sessions, uh, and things like that. I think that the reason for that is that they are easier to reach the listener because of the relatively universal language of the message. Art acting with words, theater, novel, poetry, are in a more difficult situation because they use a national language that has a limited number of understandable recipients in the host country. The transition, or I would say mixed form, between the two types of art presentation is film because of its pictural plastic components and uh, lesser role of the word in comparison to the classical theater. Film is often chosen as a presentation of the artistic and of cultural achievements of uh, the guest country. The film's example reveals, however, something more important. It points to a broader notion of culture, the broader no notion of culture which is also promoted by cultural diplomacy. In this broader sense, 
It is not the art, but the way of life of a given nation or society that matters. Its customs, its habits, its traditions, its way of thinking, of coping with problems and responding to challenges. It is more about the dominant worldview that determines thinking, willing, feeling, and by all this, the political deeds and actions. I think this is at least as important activity in the field of cultural diplomacy as the pure presentation of art. Why? Because it allows one to understand some countries' international behavior, decisions, alliances, opposition to certain decisions and actions of the third parties. Such a culture can be described, of course not perfectly, from a perspective of a system of values, or structure of values, of hierarchy of values that is predominant in a given society. I use here the concept or the notion of value that, despite its problematic character, problematic nature, has become very fashionable uh, recently. I will now point out on a few selected examples what may be the limitations and problems associated with such a perceived cultural diplomacy. Not so long ago, two issues related somehow to the embassy I am supervising were discussed in Berlin. Both concerned cultural diplomacy. The first was related to the dismissal of a director of the Polish Cultural Institute in Berlin after three and a half years of work only half a year before the expected day of leaving. A number of cultural institutions of this city protested against it. The Polish foreign minister was surprised because it seemed that the hosts, in this respect the Germans, wanted to decide who should direct a Polish cultural institution run by the Polish government. An unimaginable thing in the civilized world, I suppose. Imagine that some Warsaw artist or culture managers would like to decide on the position of the director of Ghetto Institute or Cervantes Institute. And yet, the vice director of Berlin Cervantes Institute protested, if I'm not wrong, against the dismissal of his Polish colleague in Berlin. The reason for this slightly earlier dismissal of the director was important, and it was connected with the second, more congenial notion of culture and its, its broader sense of culture and its promotion. The director did, not, did nothing to help the Germans to understand the reasons and the essence of the transformation in Poland. Changes that came from the death of Polish tradition and of Polish culture and that were brought about by the Polish, I would say, republicanism which led to the emergence of a new government in a democratic election. And in consequence, to a new minister of culture and chiefs of many cultural institutions, which in turn resulted in a change in concept of presentation of our country. Instead of accepting this, the uh, director of Polish Cultural Institute has joined the opposition, undermining the sense of this change uh, in his cultural policy in Berlin. A perfect illustration of this attitude was that, having embraced the, his position four years ago, he gave the, uh, to the local press an interview where he said that the most important problem for Poland and Poles is the constant anti-Semitism. Exactly the same thing was repeated by him three years ago, three years later, sorry, in another interview. It was a perfect fit in Berlin's historical policy, maybe, but it did not fit into Polish reality. There is no shortage of anti-Semites in Europe, also in Poland, but there is no need for uh, police protection in synagogues or during Jewish events. Jewish life is beginning to recover, also a greater immigration wave from Israel may never come. Let's see. Many children of Polish Jews who have been living in Israel are now applying for Polish citizenship, wanting to settle down in Poland. This topic is related to something that I will only uh, move on the basis of a digression, digression uh, given the modest amount of time I have at my disposal. Maybe we will deepen it in the discussion. It is something we call a historical 
policy. It is undoubtedly part of cultural diplomacy or part of its background. It is aimed mainly at citizens of foreign countries with the purpose of improving their image of our own country, image that was damaged by historical events from the past. A good example of a country with a perfect historical policy is Germany. Since many years, it is usually not said that the Second World War was triggered by the Germans, but that it, the Nazis did it. It was the Nazis who built concentration camps, most of them in Poland, so the Nazis were, were probably Poles. Uh, in the United States, surveys were conducted among academic youth, and therefore among uh, people with a certain level of education. Surveys asking what kind of people, uh, of people the Nazis derived from, and most res responded that uh, they were Poles. That is why it is nothing, it is neither a fortity uh, or a failure that the new Polish government, modeling itself on the Germans, has begun to focus on pursuing its own historical policy based on historical research and to regulate it also by a uh, state, introducing penalties for the continuation of something what was called Auschwitz Lüge, Auschwitz Lie, uh, for instance, for using the formulation of Polish concentration camps. Polish diplomatic missions state several hundred such cases each year, but it's on the margin, as I said. And anti-Semitism is a terrible charge, especially in Germany, where anti-Semitism has experienced such an awful dimension. But let's move, to another, mm, move on to another example of the difficulties or limitations in conducting uh, cultural diplomacy. Some time ago, in the Russian city of Smolensk, there was a, an air crash in which the Polish political elite died, the current and the former president of Poland, presidents of Poland, and 94 people from the surroundings, among them generals, uh, politicians, scientists, people of culture, priests. Six years after the catas catastrophe, a feature film was made, directed by a well-known film director, who, who focused not so much on solving the mystery of the catastrophe, it was more about showing the degeneration of media and the transformation that were experienced as a result of this catastrophe by the Polish society. One hypothesis about the, uh, the cause of the catastrophe was, however, signaled. This hypothesis uh, was not uh, compatible with the official explanation announced without careful research by the Russian Commission. The accident happened at Russian territory, to open the Germans and the foreigners living in Germany to changes in the Polish society, to the spiritual dimension of this catastrophe, and finally to the different versions of explanation of this event, Polish diplomats decided to show this film in German cinemas, paying for the renting of the halls, buying the show rights from the distributors, and financing production of so-called subtitles. And you cannot imagine the problems that occurred in this country, supposedly so widely open to the various points of view, open for the diversity of opinions. First, the German press was struck, writing that the film was artistically hopeless and that it contained primitive political propaganda. Then, the unknown perpetra perpetrators began to threaten the Berlin cinemas who decided to show the film. As a result, the cinemas broke the already, already signed contracts at the last moment, ready to pay the penalty connected with it. The problem, however, did not disappear because the attitude of the Berlin, cin Berlin cinemas was constantly and mercilessly criticized by the Polish media. Therefore, someone, to this day I don't know who, decided how to cleverly disarm the bomb, to show it, the film, in a way of not showing it. Sounds strange, doesn't it? I'll try to explain what I mean and what went on. The film presentation was organized by, this, by a small 
and relatively poor Polish cabaret club, club in Berlin. It is unknown where it received this club received a substantial sum of money to rent the movie and was and the film presentation was followed by a pseudo discussion with carefully chosen particip participants and without participation of uh, of the audience this example perfectly demonstrates how political issues in this case the defense of a russian version of this event determine the effectiveness of promoting culture or its lack. There may also additionally exist in this respect some ideological obstacles. A few years ago, the very prominent American actor Andy Garcia produced a beautiful film called Cristiada. He himself also played a major role in it. This did not help the film in European cinemas. The film told about the two uprising of uh, Mexican Christians, oppressed and even killed by the socialist Stalinist president of Mexico, Calles, and by his government. And the same is now threatening to the great Hollywood film entitled, entitled Zookeeper's Wife, that I watched a month ago in Poland. But you will not watch it in Berlin or in Germany. It uh, tells about the director of Warsaw Zoo and his wife uh, who bravely saved hundreds of Jewish, Jewish lives during the Second World War, hiding them in the, in the, in the zoo. Uh, it does not... Why it, why, what's the reason that uh, the, the premiere that was planned for May was postponed to the October, November, maybe it won't be uh, shown at all, even in, 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 the f in, in the main most known actor, uh, Daniel Brühl, plays the main role in the film. It, because it does not agree, I would say, that what I mean with ideological mm, reasons, it does not agree with a left-wing ideology. It does not agree with a historical policy promoted uh, by the European Union to a certain degree, in which there is no place for the peoples or nations in their positive role for the development of culture and for saving humanity. Uh, some conclu conclusions. As a philosopher, I am a supporter of hermeneutical philosophy in the light of this concept developed, as you certainly know, by Hans-Georg Gadam and continued by Paul Ricoeur and Ferdinand Fellmann, for instance, man is above all a cultural being, a creature whose essence is set in and by culture. This culture is being shaped up in the course of the historical process to which the given human communities are submitted. At some point of human history, the dominance is gained by the communities that organize themselves in a state. It is in the state where spirituality of a given community, Sittlichkeit, as Hegel puts it, finds its protection and the opportunity for dynamic development. There arises something like a cultural transmission, something we call tradition, and the importance of authority, of rules and persons in different forms is given with it. The most important element of this whole is language. It is the human spoken uh, language, so-called mother tongue, that is a sort of record of the struggle of a given community with its social and natural environment. Language is here not just a means of communication, an instrument. It, is, it seems to be a kind of ontologi ontological structure, a frame of thinking with its concepts, its categories, and its grammar. The spiritual riches of mankind are made up of achievements of such communities which naturally cooperate with each other, which compete with each other, penetrate themselves to a certain uh, extent. And according to hermeneutical philosophy, such concepts as tradition, culture, language, history refer to each other. What is happening today seems to confirm the, de the deep truth of the hermeneutic 
classical philosophy. In spite of intellectual power of the Enlightenment universality, a la Kant, the social and historical realities correspond more closely to what Fichte tried to describe in his late writings, among uh, other in speeches to the German nation. The nations that once made up Yugoslavia or Czechoslovakia have found not so long ago for have uh, sorry have fought uh, not so long ago for the separate national state the Basques and the Catalans the Walloons and the Flemish are now also thinking about their statehood it is the nations at least in Europe that via states form the framework framework for the flowering of their culture it is no coincidence that diplomacy usually represents a certain state, usually. So it has to promote the culture of its people in the framework of cultural diplomacy. I mean, of course, nation in political sense, not in an ethnic sense. Uh, in the light of this approach, I mean, of hermeneutical approach to culture, to culture and to cultural diplomacy, cultural diplomacy is a presentation of the culture of a given country, showing its contribution to the cultural richness and the variety of humankind. For a host country, it is a chance to confront with that what is different, what is alien and unfamiliar. And the adoption of it, always partial and imperfect, is described in the famous Gadamer's figure or Gadamer's formula of Horizontenverschmelzung, fusions of horizons and expressing it in our ordinary language, this is a chance to broaden our horizon, our intellectual and our emotional horizon, and to save and care for forms of communal life that have already disappeared in the postmodern countries and may still be attractive as a remedy to the crisis of Western culture, which, in my opinion, is evident. Thank you for your attention.